Welcome to the video, everybody. Um, this is going to be uh, a video about um, a scene that I did inside of Blender and also Lumion. Uh, it is a, it's just like a normal kitchen scene, kind of like a rustic country kitchen scene, I guess. Um, but I took it uh, from the iMesh like uh, pre-made kitchen sets that they just released um, last week. So yeah, we'll hop into that and just kind of see uh, some of the differences between um, how my Blender photos turned out compared to my Lumion ones. And then um, also just a quick animation that I did in Lumion to kind of touch on that. So hope you enjoyed the video. Right. So, uh, right off the bat, this is kind of like the main shot, um, in the kitchen that I was working on. Um, and I, I will definitely say this is not my best like Lumion work. Um, this one didn't actually turn out as well um, in comparison as uh, like compared to the last bedroom scene that I did, but I kind of wanted to do the video because of that, because um, uh, it kind of talks about just sort of some of the strengths and weaknesses of Lumion. Um, they kind of highlight that. Um, and even the Blender one that I did, like, you know, it's it's pretty good, but I feel like I didn't really have, I don't know, I just feel like I could have done the, the lighting a little bit better. It was a, a very warm scene, but like I said, it's, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but, uh, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to share it anyways. Um, but yeah, so looking at this one, um, the, the thing that I had the most problem with in the Lumion one is I couldn't get the wood right. And not, like, it is a little too blue, but even, even that would have been okay. Like if you kind of look at this shot here, like there's, um, there's like a, you get a lot of this, like, um, I guess roughness in the wood and I just couldn't replicate that inside of Lumion like if you zoom in you can see that it's there but I'm not getting that those high contrast areas um so that that that's something I think is kind of taking away a lot from the scene the the color there I like I said I could have you know lined that up a little bit better I kind of liked how the blue like this blue looked in Lumion but um it was a pretty good example um the uh, the other thing so um just because kind of how it is with, uh, you know, like real time uh, rendering glass that I find never looks um, as good. So that's not that's not really a knock at Lumion. Like that's that's a pretty standard thing I found. Like if I did this in Eevee, you'd probably have, you know, similar kind of results like this. But you can definitely see the differences here. Like in in my Blender version, you get these kind of like um, this decorative glass, I guess. I'm not sure exactly how you would uh, say that, but then that same model inside of um, Lumion just kind of comes out looking like a little bit wobbly, I guess. Like I, I did put some relief on it to make it look um, a little bit different, but yeah, that's, I, I think that that's something that kind of was holding the scene back a little bit too, where I think the wine glass looks really nice here. Um, and the, uh, the faucet also looks really good, but I just wasn't getting the same reflections in the Lumion one, which, you know, as I said, that's, that's not that weird for a real time, um, engine and you can see definitely around here on the uh around the hood of the oven that you're kind of getting that weird um that just like that weird uh glass as well um but yeah so let's go to the next picture then um so yeah this this one is probably the shot that turned out the best in lumion in my opinion oh let me zoom out a little bit more sorry um so yeah i was actually pretty happy with how this one looked in lumion like i said you know the wood could be a little bit better but um overall like i thought that it was a you know pretty pretty nice shot like you're getting a lot of uh reflections on the um on this the sink base in here but you know i i could have toned that down a little bit like i i did really like how i was looking in lumion but maybe i even could have turned that up a little bit in blender um but yeah like it's it's kind of the same same little issues here where it's like you know the glass isn't as sharp as i think it could be um and then the you know just yeah i guess it's the wood um but uh yeah, th this shot I think actually turned out the best because what I did is I just pulled up a uh, just a random picture off of Google and um, I made it so that the that's kind of in the background, but then I threw some uh, eye mesh trees and some botanic trees just in the foreground, so it kind of helps blend it in a little bit better. Um, that way, if you're kind of moving around the kitchen, you still see those two plants outside of the window, but you you're kind of seeing that background in the distance um, just because. In my opinion, there's no sense in doing backgrounds like that. It doesn't add enough to your scene. Like just take a picture, put it in, and then just kind of match the lighting with the how the sky looks. Um, and that's the same thing that I do for Lumion. 
Um, I could have made the background a little less emissive. Um, I think I made that too bright. Um, they, they should look closer to this, I guess. Like, then it's also kind of pulled up higher. Um, I had to do a couple of adjustments just before I brought into Lumia. And I guess this is one that I kind of um, messed up on. But yeah, if you if you are using Lumion, like Blender Lumion, I do recommend that you just remove any vegetation that you have and use Lumions because Lumions um, fine nature is probably um, the thing that I think is the best about the software, um, or at least like the, the assets that they have, like they're, they're very high quality. And I, I honestly think that the fine nature, uh, models are good by any standard. Um, me and my business partner said multiple times that we wish we had the fine nature inside of blender, uh, when we're using it because they work so well. Um, but yeah, so th this was the shot that I thought came out the nicest. This one, um, was Probably the one that came up the closest, however. There were some slight material changes I could have done here. Like, I think I, yeah, I just made this all concrete here um, because I wasn't really liking how this white looked inside of, uh, inside of Lumion. So um, the thing that kind of stands out to me the most, well, one is that this is a square frame. I could have cut this in, um, I could have cut this out a little bit more, but I figured like, you know, who cares? So it should be something like, Something more like that. Um, yeah, and it's, you know, it's something that's not really a, I guess, a unique problem to this scene. Like the the lighting, or sorry, the, the metal um, is just looking a lot more sharp uh, in the Blender one, which is this one. I, should, I guess I should have marked this a little bit better. Maybe I'll just put a little icon down there so everybody knows. Um, but uh, yeah, so th this came out looking really, really sharp. Like I thought that was good. Um, you are getting a lot, quite a bit of reflections on this. I, I probably could have tweaked the color a little bit more. I, that's something I don't want to worry too much about in this video. I kind of want to see like, you know, if the textures are, you know, a little bit off and it's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I was pretty happy with how this came in. I didn't really have to do, uh, too much adjusting. Like the, the color map is off a little bit. I think that that I might just have like the, the slider turned up in Lumion, but yeah, you know, it, it overall was pretty good. Um, you might not be able to see it too well, but inside of lumion if i actually just pull this up if i go over here i think this actually came in oh okay there we go so it might be kind of hard to see from the picture and even this i guess but this actually has some really nice um i guess like details to it um i thought that that that, that was something that kind of showed really well i think that one i might have actually went and put a gloss mask on I could be wrong with that just because I wanted to get as much detail as I could just since these shots were so close up. Um, but I do, th these are the kind of things that I've been trying to do lately where, um, you know, you kind of have like your kitchen scene and then you, you go and do like almost like this little like something like a side picture of like something like this. Like if we go back to my first shot here, you can kind of see this in the background um, and it is right in the middle uh, of the frame. So it's something that people might kind of see and go like, you know, there's a little shelf back there. And then when you're looking through, you actually get kind of a close up on what's there. Um, so yeah, I, I was trying to do that. Um, overall, this was a, I think this was pretty close. Like considering how how long the, the images took, I think that this is actually a pretty fair trade off. With some with some tweaking of the textures, I think you actually could get this almost looking um, identical and at a fraction of the time. I, I also should probably have just remove real skies. I really didn't like how this, like these lines kind of turned out, but. Um, I tried to get as much natural light in as I could. However, I did want to leave the blinds in. Um, so we'll go to the next shot. Right. So this is one that was actually kind of, this was kind of interesting. So the depth of field I thought looked really good in Blender. Um, and so I tried to do it in Lumion and Lumion has a couple of weird little, I don't even know if they're bugs. I think it's just kind of how it's designed, but depth of field does work very strange with glass and this is something that i actually didn't know until um until i actually went and started like making some of these pictures so uh, i just want to show this quickly um and i guess i'll show a way that i kind of got around it but it's not a perfect solution so if we go here um and we'll add in a depth of field um depth of field right so if i change I think that this is actually a metal material because it was giving me such a hard time. Um, but let's just change this to glass quickly. And this will just take a moment. But um, if you change this to glass and then you go in here and you go photo, when depth of field is on, so we go up 
and background. Let me just tweak a couple of things here so it comes up. Okay, so, right. So, yeah, I was trying to replicate this shot, but if if there's a glass object and it's it's kind of in between the camera and the depth of field, it seems like it just gets swallowed by the depth of field. Like, as you can see here, so if I kind of adjust this a little bit, the, uh, like, it, it just seems like I can't, like, it shouldn't be uh, getting blurry like that. It should still be in the foreground, um, but it's not. Like, if I go, yeah, go right here. Like, you can see that the label is remaining pretty sharp here. Um, but the, the glass is not. So what I was doing is, like, for this, I just put a metal on it. You can also just do the old, like, um, turn, like, gloss uh, and reflectivity all the way up. Um, and then you it's, like, basically a metal. It's transparent. Um, I think Nuno uh, Silva made a video about that, kind of how you can, like, trick reflections. So, um, yeah, that, that's just something I kind of wanted to mention. So that's why I, I decided to just not go with the depth of field in this one. Um, even though it really helps frame the um, like the food platter, it, it was looking really good. The food platter actually did come out pretty well in um, inside of Lumion. I think I probably should have put some waxiness on this. I don't think I did. Um, that would have made it look a little more sharp. Like I, I think that the the pear looks a little too um, looks just a little too shiny. Um, and then yeah, you you can kind of see the difference in the glass here. Like even with uh, like the reflection threshold turned up, stuff like that. Um, you, you just don't get the same caustics and that's, so this is probably the area that, um, blender and Lumion, um, differ for like, kind of like final interior so stills like this. Um, and it's it, like, again, this isn't really a knock on Lumion. This is something that all real time render engines kind of a problem with surprisingly glass is not that easy to like actually deal with inside of a, a real time render engine. Um, so yeah, it's actually, it's not that bad of a trade-off. Like maybe I could have turned the reflectivity up a little bit. Um, but this one was probably the, the greatest uh, difference, I guess, in them um, because I thought this one came out real like the Blender one came out really nicely, and the Lumion one, Lumion one is good, um, but uh, I think it's just definitely um, definitely sharper. Like when I did the last comparison, um, you could see that like since there was so much natural light in the scene, like the Blender and the Lumion one were extremely close. Like they were. Um, it, like I think it was in that case, like it's probably easier for me just to do Lumion because it is faster. There were some very minor tweaks, um, but yeah, this this one is definitely a little more noticeable. Um, and yeah, this is the same deal. So, um, you know, aside from the, I kind of messed the textures up a little bit. Like you do sort of get that, I guess, the same effect. This one, I, I in the Blender one, I made the depth of field go a little bit too high, or I guess like too close to the camera. I should have pushed it back a little bit more. Um, but, um, you know, I just kind of wanted a little shot that I guess was like, kind of like looking at the entire kitchen where it's, you know, it's blurry, but you have something, just something interesting in the foreground, I guess. Um, this one definitely didn't turn out as well. Um, but I think that as again, that, I think that's kind of the, the artist, uh, the artist's fault on that one. It's, um, yeah, it's, if people have, I guess, some suggestions about depth of field, um, let me know because I have run into a couple of issues, um, with depth of field lately, even though like, I, I love using it, but, um, I, I don't know if I'm using it wrong in some cases or if, um, you know, there's just some, like some limitations that I don't know about. Um, but yeah, so in the next video I release, I will actually go over another, um, bug or just, I guess like a weird, like functionality, um, with that, uh, or depth of field that is. Um, so yeah, I guess the last thing I want to look at is something that you know, you might be like, well, why would I ever want to use Lumion for this? And I'm about to show you why. So I think these images took in Blender took 15 or 20 minutes, maybe, maybe like 10. It was um, probably I'd say around 15 to be safe. So they took 15 minutes each. Um, so rendering these five images here, these took, let's say an hour and 15 minutes. So the, uh, if I just pull up my folder here so not only the lumion uh the lumion pictures take like 15 seconds once i actually set them all up um like 15 seconds each in one hour is also able to render this final video and so this is only done on like three stars it, it's not perfect like um th there's a lot of things i would change if i was doing like a final version but the point being is that you know i can um 
that I'm actually able to just render an, like a 47 second animation in an hour that would just not happen. Like, unless you want to set it up in Eevee, um, in all honesty, I'm not very good at Eevee. Uh, whenever I have to do like quick animations, I always use Lumion. Um, that's just kind of my workflow. Like if, if you do use Eevee, I don't think that there's a problem with that. Um, but personally, I just find it's easier to set up Lumion. Uh, I'm a little more used to it. And like it, Lumion does deliver um, a good product when it comes to like how fast you can actually get it out. Like this is a very reasonable animation. Like you can, like I said, you could do a lot of things to sort of clean it up. So it's not as like, um, I guess it's just not as like, like, I guess fuzzy in some areas, like, you know, make sure that the, you know, all the materials are working uh, correctly, but yeah, like to be able to go through this in an hour and 15 minutes, it's like, you can either have five high quality stills or you can have five photos, which are, you know, decent. Like you'll get the point of the space across. You'll be able to convey that to a client. And then you also get, um, you know, an, a, a, you know, almost a minute long animation with it to kind of talk about a few things. So, um, I don't really think that there's a wrong answer. Um, I think it just kind of depends on what you need to deliver to the client, um, or what the purpose of it is. Um, it's also mentioned worth mentioning too, that Lumion can do panoramas very quickly compared to blender. Um, so if you did want to have an animation of someone kind of standing in front of the sink, then you could do that. Um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, this video was interesting. I know that this one is, it definitely wasn't as close, uh, going into Lumion, uh, as it was with, um, the last one, but I kind of did that on purpose because I wanted, you know, I wanted people to see one comparison where it was very close and then one comparison where, you know, Blender was definitely better looking. Um, but again, it's, it's not fair to compare these two engines like head to head. Like, you know, I like doing it because it's, you get to see both sides of my workflow and I can talk about it, but they are two completely different softwares. Like it's, Blender, you know, is kind of like you can do all the modeling, you can do some rendering, you can do animations, everything like that. If you are a beginner, um, starting to learn this stuff, I really do recommend you learn Blender. And even if you are a fairly experienced Lumion user, I really recommend that you learn Blender. Um, it's not like I'm not showing these as kind of like one or the other. Um, while for a particular project, it might be one or the other. Um, overall, I do think that artists should learn. If you're a Lumion user, you should 100% learn Blender or 3ds Max or something because you once you start learning those softwares, you'll realize how much SketchUp actually limits you uh, in what you can do, and it it really helped my development because I learned a lot of stuff um, that Lumion kind of does for you. Um, so to be able to learn that kind of like back end of it and then to kind of push that further in Lumion, it helped me out a lot. So. Um, yeah, if you found the video interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you give me uh, a like. Um, you know, maybe comment below the video, uh, tell me your thoughts on it. You know, what would you kind of prefer in this situation? Would you want to use Blender? Or would you want to have, you know, almost a minute long animation in that same amount of time uh, in Lumion? Um, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button to help me with the YouTube algorithm. Um, if you are subscribed, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night.